The Industar 61 52mm f2.8 was the standard lens that came with FET3 interchangeable lens rangefinder camera. FET3 was made in former Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic and manufactured between 1961 and 1980. The factory and its products were named FED after Felix Edmundovich Dzerzhinsky, who is famous as the founder of the Soviet secret police. The FED factory produced over 2 million units of FED3 cameras, with several variations throughout the years. The FED3 that this lens was part of is also known as the FED3B, recognizable by the film advance lever and the flat top deck. This Indostar lens is the so-called zebra version because the lens barrel has black enamel and chrome finish. For some time the FET3B was sold with a different lens, the Indostar 26M 5cm f2.8, which had an all chrome finish. The optical design of Indostar 61 consists of four elements in three groups. Aperture ranges from f2.8 to f16 with click stops in between. The diaphragm is made of 10 rounded aperture blades. This lens accepts filters with 40.5mm diameter. It weighs 128 grams. On the back this lens has a Leica thread mount, also known as L39. I used just a cheap L39 to FE adapter in order to use this lens on my Sony camera. Minimum focusing distance from your subject to your film plane or sensor is 1 meter. The Indostar 61 52mm f2.8 is a really nice little lens. I didn't know what to expect from it since so much has been said about the lack of quality control when it comes to Soviet lenses, but my copy is quite stellar and I'm very happy with what it can deliver. My main issue with this lens and many rangefinder lenses is the long minimum focusing distance of 1 meter. For someone like me who loves close-up shots this isn't ideal, but I was able to get around this issue by simply adding extension tubes if I ever wanted to get closer to my subject. But if close-up shots are not your priority, this lens is excellent. It is already sharp at f2.8 and becomes very sharp as you stop it down, reaching peak performance across the whole frame at f8. Because of its long minimum focusing distance, I use it mainly for landscape photography and I really enjoyed it. This lens produces very nice colors with good saturation and contrast. Perhaps the colors are not as vibrant as some later multi-coated lenses and I'll describe them as more on the neutral side of the spectrum. Flare and ghosting are well controlled, but I'll suggest using a lens hood to prevent any unwanted stray light. Chromatic aberrations are barely visible and not really an issue with just a hint of purple fringing. There is some vignetting at f2.8 but that is completely gone by f5.6. The Industar 61 is very well made with a solid all-metal construction that will last a long time, but the build quality seems a little more utilitarian and not as refined as Japanese lenses from the same period. The one main problem that these lenses suffer from is dried up helicoid grease, and my copy was not an exception. I had to take it apart and clean up the old grease, so beware of this issue if you're looking for this lens on the used market. So all in all, this is a wonderful little 50mm lens that is compact, lightweight and capable of producing some very fine images. And since so many copies were made back in the day, you can find it for a really reasonable price. This copy of the Indostar 61 is extra special to me because it belonged to my uncle who grew up in Bulgaria and loved photography. When I was a kid, he was the only person I knew who had a camera and he was super encouraging when I became interested in the visual arts. Needless to say, I'm extremely attached to this lens because of its history and I'll always cherish it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time here at Vintage Optics.